if you think that's all, no, it's not. There is a lot more coming. The Dutch Oak has arrived. Good morning. Hey, hey guys, good morning. We are here in Cologne, Cologne or Cologne for the FIBO. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get started. Just gonna get some meals prepared. And let's enjoy today, because it will be explosive. <clears throat> so we actually arrived yesterday, and yesterday we did some sightseeing here, like uh, looking at the Dom, AKA the good old church here. And we also did some grocery shopping, because normally we will be going here to the FIBO, and we only look at the inside of the expo, but not actually the city itself. And we've been here for like, more than 10 years so right now just preparing some of the meals and I always buy the chicken just cooked nice and easy no fat added just pure chicken and then I'm gonna go to the expo guys but preparation is half the work as they say in the Netherlands mooi hoor wordt vandaag ook lekker warm bij jullie lagertje dat konijn Oh! He blew up again. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta do it for the Olympia right now, yeah, so yeah, yeah. important. How are you feeling? Yeah, good man. Yeah. It's, uh, Energy level again high? Yeah, yeah. very high. Like yesterday we uh, walked through the city and a lot of people like already wanted to take a picture, but it feels so weird because this is the first time, I've been here like 10 times already, yeah. but this is the first time we actually went into the city because <laughs> normally you always only see the inside of the depot, yeah, yeah. but now we went into the city and we went to like the Dom, the church, and like we wanted to, we just wanted to check out the church and I didn't expect people to recognize me but because I wore like a big oversized t-shirt like undercover yeah. but still people <laughs> came up to me I was like whoa this is uh, pretty special and a lot of people yeah, mentioned yeah he has like a very special appearance <laughs> like not normal you know so that's the thing <laughs> yeah but they also mentioned like the all kinds of UK yeah. so I think it's important that I did that one as well because a lot of people from here actually went there so it's so close yeah so for the European fans it was a great thing to do so feel great yeah, are you excited for today? Yes, I am. Are, 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 are you excited for the crowd? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, oh, are you scared of the crowd? <laughs> no, I'm, I, I've been um, conditioned to it now for the, since the two Ara Classics. <laughs> so I know what it can be like. Yeah. That was scary back then, but now I'm like, okay, I know what to expect, so it's great. And um, I've always gone to this expo, but now finally, for the first time, I'm not a visitor. But I'm actually here as like a creator. Or same, yeah, same. Like it's a, it's yeah. like weird. The, yeah, the last time I was here was at uh, what was two seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen here. Yeah. Uh, but then came, I say with cojones, and then uh, <laughs> we were like uh, done. And then the first time now, but as a influencer, as yeah. like yeah. as an appearance here yeah. of the show, it's amazing. It's, yeah, it's special because I think uh, for me. You first went here as like a fan of all the other bodybuilders. It's like yeah. you work within a gym yeah. and you're really surprised, like, whoa, they're actually so big in real life. Yeah. And then throughout the years, you get more and more serious, you get more known yourself, and then you're on the other side of it. And you get bigger by yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just very special. So yeah. On the lats, just on the lats, <laughs> 10 centimeters plus. <laughs> don't overcome Chris with the lats. You think he's going to compete again? I hope so. I want to beat him at his best. Yeah. I don't want an excuse. Well, listen, it's not an excuse, but when you get a child, your prep will be more difficult. And um, I've had it twice already, so I know what it's like. Yeah. But I still want him to be at his very best because you don't want people to say afterwards, oh, you beat him because of uh, his, his bad prep or yeah. something like this. But I also want it for him because he's a nice guy. I want him to feel like, okay, I'm at my best now. I don't lose because of something weird circumstances. And of course, I make it sound easier than it is, but my dream scenario would be that he's at his best and I'll be at my best and then we battle it out. Yeah. yeah. A little goosebumps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very nice. I love yeah. that. I love that. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. That's the goal.
Well, we just had a very successful photo moment, two hours back to back, and uh, the, the row, the line, the queue didn't stop. So now it's time to review a little bit with some chicken and some vegetables. Because yesterday, me and Marley went out to have a little sushi, which was very nice. But today, uh, it's going to be a, you know, either, probably a rest day. Yeah, it is a rest day, actually. Yesterday, I trained. And we're going to add some delicious sauce on here and get fueled for the bodybuilding talk I'll have in about half an hour. Well, let's go. Aus hoffentlich von euch begrüßen wir auf der Bühne unseren zweifachen Arnold Classic Champion Wesley Wizard. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you. We have a seat. Good to see you guys. Thank you for coming. Um, not that I want to talk you into ending your career, but have you ever made like a plan? Did you say I'll compete till I win the Olympia or I will compete till I'm 40? Because you have also have business, you have yeah. children. So is there a plan? You want to go into acting maybe? You have a great accent, <laughs> great voice. Yes, I might want to go into voice acting for sure. But uh, <laughs> you know, in terms of age, I was always thinking about 35. But with uh, the caveat that if I don't achieve what I have set to achieve by the time I turn 35, then I might not do professional bodybuilding anymore because, you know, if you're 35 and you've already been doing shows for 15 years by then, I mean, are you really going to change something by then? And of course, thinking about your children, thinking about your health as well. But when the Arnold Classic has changed a lot, of course, it opens a lot of new doors. And um, I think the Olympia is a true possibility now. And of course, winning it once is always an incredible dream. But then there's a question, do you just win it once or multiple times in a row? So it really depends on what's going to happen and how healthy you remain. But I, I feel great, I feel healthy. I'm able to truly make a great living out of this and provide for my children and my family. So it's, it's just a great blessing to be able to do this. And uh, I think there's still many more years ahead for sure. I feel great, so that's not going to be an issue. Let's talk about training a little. We have a young audience here. Yes. Most of them are young, as far as I can see. So what would you say concerning your career? What uh, were the biggest mistakes you made in the beginning? And what's your training philosophy now? Yeah, so in the beginning, I really trained mostly on instinct so I did not have a set training plan I just went into the gym and of course the first one and a half years I didn't train legs <laughs> which was a big mistake but you no know, when you're young you don't have the aspiration to become a bodybuilder anyway you just train for fun and after a while you notice wait a second uh, the upper body is growing and I thought my legs were big but they're not big at all in comparison to the upper body so obviously not training every muscle group was a mistake I made and then after that, I did a lot of high volume training, everything to failure, drop sets, supersets, you know, the Arnold uh, workouts, like chest and back supersets. I did everything I could because when you're like 17, 18, you're in indestructible. So no matter what you do, you can always recover from it. But it's not the best for growth, ultimately, um, because when I started training with the progressive overload method, like logging the lifts, making sure that you get stronger week by week, or at least improve upon the previous lifts. That's when I truly made the most gains, especially in the legs. 
because when I trained by instinct, the upper body grew quite well, because you know that wasn't the problem. But if you then see some muscle groups in your body that are not growing as quick, you've got to change something up. And for me, the legs have been a weak point for many years. So once I uh, implemented that progressive overload wave training, so every week you try to go one rep more or just five kilos more, and eventually, if you get stronger, your muscles have to grow as well. So that's what happened, you know, since 2019, and now finally it's starting to show the true effect of it by, uh, yeah, by winning the incredible Arnold. So now again, back to the upcoming Mr. Olympia, leading to, to the next Mr. Olympia. What are you going to change, or would you say you just keep doing what you are doing now, and what, what uh, made, the, made it possible to win the Arnold Classic? Yeah, so the most boring answer I always give why I look different at the Arnold Classic is I simply kept going for longer. And a lot of athletes, they are afraid to lose muscle mass when they keep doing the cardio, eating no carbs, and keep training hard. But this goes back to the logging part. If, you, if your strength stays as high as the beginning of the prep, you know objectively you're not losing muscle. So mentally you know, okay, nothing's wrong. Yes, I feel hungry. Yes, I don't feel energized. But in the gym, if you can still perform, your muscle is still there to uphold that tissue. And the only thing I'm gonna do for the Olympia is we're gonna see, okay, so many weeks out, I gotta be at a certain weight so that I will be on time with losing weight before the Olympia. And I wanna be at the same weight as for the Arnold, but then two weeks earlier again just like what I did for the Arnold Classic competitions. So I always see in my physique, okay, if I see those details, then I know I'm on track. But now I saw them in my glutes, which I've never seen before. So now that's gonna be the next landmark, and then I'm gonna go beyond that as well. While keeping, of course, um, you know, I worked on the weak points, the legs, I'm gonna keep, keep working on those. So the legs will be improved, the glutes will be improved, the hamstrings will be improved, but then with an even better conditioning uh, as the Olympia, I, I mean, as the Arnold Classic, and um, yeah, the presentation will also be a lot better. So uh, it really is going to be an exciting show. So, so what exactly do you need to do to beat Chris Bumstead? Well, what I need to do to beat Chris Bumstead is show my strengths, because I have strengths, he has strengths, and we both have weaknesses as well. So I have to overpower his weaknesses with my strengths, and my weaknesses have to look less weak against his strengths. <laughs> So basically, uh, I work on the legs. I th think from the front, I can really battle with him already. And from the side, like from the side chest, it's going to be a deeper hamstring drop, uh, bigger glutes basically, also from the back. The glutes are a big thing, even though it sounds strange and classic physique to work on the glutes. But nowadays, they are shown, they're part of the physique, they need to show development. So the more conditioned I get, the bigger the muscles look, but they will also literally be bigger because I have been working on them and keep working on them until the prep starts. So what I need to do to beat him is simply, you know, excel in my strengths even more and in certain poses be undeniable and yeah, basically improve my presentation by so much, be super confident that I simply know I'm here to win this competition. That's what I'm gonna do. Did, did you talk to Chris or did he talk to you after winning the Arnold's? Yes, he said actually after the pre-judging at the Arnold Classic Ohio, he came to me backstage and he said, whatever you did, keep doing this because you looked incredible on stage. And, but, but then we didn't know I was going to win even. Um, and I also spoke to him um, a few days later. Uh, we actually had dinner with a you know, big amount of athletes and people. And it was nice uh, talking to him just outside of bodybuilding also, just to get to know him as a person. He's a very nice guy as well. So, of course, I wish him all the best. Also, we talked to him a little bit about his upcoming uh, daughter being born, which is going to be an exciting time, of course, and maybe also a difficult time during prep. But uh, <laughs> I, I know it because I have two children myself. Um, yeah, but um, we haven't really... The only thing we also talked regarding bodybuilding is I told him, well, I, I was going to plan on doing some multiple shows before the Olympia, and he told me, as a friend, I'm telling you not to do them, but as a competitor, please do all the shows you can, because then you show up less good at the Olympia, of course, but uh, he's just a nice guy overall, in my opinion. But we did have a very nice Olympia battle, of course, uh, me, Urs, Ramon, and, and Chris uh, in Arizona, which was great, but um, yeah, just very exciting to battle against him at the Olympia.
are you going to take a shirt off for you and for, for us and for the audience? Well, oh. möchte das jemand sehen? Ein Wesley Wizards ein paar Wochen Guys, should, nach dem, should I do it or what? Nach der Arnold Classic mit ein bisschen Musik. <lacht> All right. Alrighty guys, that was a nice, busy, hectic, but very grateful day. Day one is finished at the FIBO. This was a Saturday, but I'll also be here on a Sunday from 11 to 1. We'll be at the Gym 80 booth, which is going to be amazing as well. And Gym 80 is going to be very familiar to you guys when you watch my training videos in the gym we have ourselves in the Netherlands. 100% fit gym because I have already told you guys in previous videos I want to invest, seriously invest, not just time but actual hard-earned cash into the gym, not just by making it look good but also having functional equipment for also my own progress to the Olympia. As you all know, I need to work on some weak points and I need full range of motion, literally infinite range of motion machines which Gym 80 can provide. So tomorrow we'll be there. I'll be able to test out some other machines, but uh, it's gonna be awesome, guys. See you there tomorrow, and uh, thank you for everybody who came up to me today with their great stories, pictures, handshakes, letting me sign all kinds of stuff. That was very interesting. But anyway, thank you for the golden support, and uh, see you tomorrow. All right, guys, we are here at Gym 80. As you can see, the king of machines. Why am I here? Well, if you look at the background, you see all kinds of golden machines. And of course, we always like to stay golden. So I'm here, look at all the people here. Very supportive, very incredible. I'm super happy to be able to do this. I'll be here for two hours, enjoying the crowd, the machines, pictures, etc. So let's do this. So that was a very nice uh, meet and greet with other people and now it's time to, of course that we're here at Gym 80 to try out some of those incredible machines and of course they are golden and we are actually going to get this one for the gym as well because we have a smaller area but this is a multifunctional machine meaning you can do flies, curls or tricep extension so let's try out some uh, cable flies here to get a very nice pump because who doesn't like a pump on the expo This is the old school Arnold Schwarzenegger machine. He used to do donkey calf races, not with a machine, but with people on his back. But we, of course, can do this, uh, you know, with the machine itself. And this is an exercise I will be doing a whole lot for the Mr. Olympia to bring up those calves, because, you know, I used to have very good calves, and now it's time to bring them back to the peak. Let's go. Now. When I talk about the range of motion, this is the ultimate example. An infinite range of motion. Just look at this. You want to be able to go all the way up, get a good stretch. 
Arm hamstrings, we don't have a seated leg curl at the gym. And you want to be able to get the full stretch up because that's the benefit of a leg curl as opposed to a laying leg curl. The seated leg curl has more of a stretch. Oh, I'm gonna get this for the gym to be able to mash those hamstrings with the rest of the legs and the body to be able to make them grow for the Mr. Olympia. We're also gonna get this one because this is a combination of a reverse fly and of course the pack deck which I just did. But the range of motion and freedom of motion is just incredible here, which is what you need if you're a tall guy like me. So as I keep saying this, you realize that I'm getting machines that are able to go through a full range of motion when you're taller as well. So that's what I simply need to bring out the final few percent of my physique to eventually become Mr. Olympia. If you want wide lats, you gotta be able to fully stretch the lats. So on this machine, I keep saying it, range of motion is important and a lot of gyms, you know I go to America a lot and they have like even plate loaded machines that don't have the full stretch because then you, you, know, you hit already the bottom with the weights and now you can hit that full stretch, get that ultimate stretch and range of motion and the ultimate contraction for the best back development. 200 kilos. <laughs> yeah. We had a 150, but now yeah, the, we got the world's largest number. We just arrived at the heaviest dumbbells in the universe. So, we are here. We all know Ronnie Coleman's famous 200 pound dumbbells, but these are 200 kilo dumbbells. 2.2 times as heavy per dumbbell. Of course, they gotta be gold. We're not gonna attempt to lift this, even though I really want to, because everything I just said about improving myself for the Mr. Olympia could go in vain if I try to mess myself up with these dumbbells, but uh, they are pretty cool indeed. All right, guys, that was the last day at the FIBO. It was an amazing day. Once again, thank you to everybody who came up to me for pictures, shaking hands, signing all kinds of stuff. We're about to head home, as you can see. Suitcases and the backpacks are packed. We prepped the meals for on the way home. Just around two hours of driving, but it was amazing to be part of this, both with ESN and Jim 80. It's been an incredible journey. Once again, it was my first time as a non-visitor at the FIBO, and it was an incredible experience. And um, if you have missed this time, be sure to come next year because I'll be there as well. And of course, once again, thank you for the support, and don't forget to stay golden.